Today we're putting the finishing touches on an image. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. We switched up to the um, where we're filming at. It's at a different angle now. I hope you enjoy it. We set up some lights and things like that, uh, trying to make it look a little bit better because we strive for awesomeness on the daily. Today we're gonna to be working with an image and um, we've been working with this image today. This is a fourth part in this series, I think, and we're gonna be finishing it up today. So if you guys are sick of looking at this image, which I kind of am, <laughs> we're gonna be finishing it up today. We're gonna to be doing a lot of sharpening. We're gonna be doing some uh, vignetting and some color work there at the end. So. Um, that's it. If you guys have any questions about what to do, uh, this is basically everything that I do when the image is, I think, just about done. These are the last steps that I take to finish it up. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, what I'd like to do first is we're going to sharpen up a little bit just because it's a little bit of, um, it's just a little bit unclear what I should be looking at, whether it's her face or the background or anything like that. And usually you can use sharpening to kind of like bring the viewer's attention to a specific part of the photo. So I'm going to make a new layer and um, a stamp visible layer is going to create a copy of everything we see. So that's shift option command E. It's going to make a stamp visible layer. And basically it just takes a copy of everything you see and puts it on a new layer. Now, um, when you guys are sharpening, there's like five different ways you can sharpen. Um, I'm going to show you a few of them. There's high pass. You can use a sharpen. There's actually a sharpen tool. You can use unsharp mask. And um, for each of those, I'm going to make a copy of my background layer. So we're going to start off with probably the simplest one. Um, this is, there's actually a sharpen tool. If you go here, under the little hand, there's a sharpen tool. And if you click on this guy that says protect detail, it's actually not a bad tool to use. Um, it doesn't suck as much as you'd think it would. So I'm gonna zoom in here and use our sharpen tool and you can just kind of paint on the areas you'd like to be sharper. And it's going to sharpen up and keep on going and keep on going until you basically stop painting. So it's a great way to like, you can see what you're doing, which is cool. And if your computer is a little bit laggy, like mine is right now, then it's like you might want to paint a little bit and then wait because it's going to think about what it's doing. But we can see it's definitely sharpening that up. Let's go ahead and sharpen some of the hair up as well. And it basically makes it look like sharpen is not exactly the same thing as focus, but it kind of makes it look like that thing that is super sharp was just happened to be the most in focus too. So if you do it on someone's eyes, for instance, it's going to make them look like they were, you know, you got your focus right on, which is cool. All right. So there we go. Let's just see the before and the after with that especially on the eye where I really painted it in. You can see that sharpening definitely draws your attention right to the eye, which is perfect. I did a little bit of mouth, a little on the hair, the ear, and a little bit on the hand. So that's one method, it's just the sharpen tool. Now, the other method we're gonna use is um, the high pass filter. You've probably seen me do this before. Um, this is probably the method that I use the most because I like it and it tends to work all the time and it's pretty easy. Um, with the stamp visible layer, I'm gonna desaturate it so it doesn't mess up my colors. So we're gonna hit Shift Command U to desaturate it. Then we're gonna change this from a normal down here to soft light. Now let's try overlay. Overlay is gonna be a little bit more intense. Soft light is gonna be less intense. And then we're gonna to go to filter down here to other and then high pass. Now there's really no secret to choosing a radius here. Um, you basically just choose something that you think uh, looks good. So start down pretty low. When it's really low, you're not gonna be able to see what's going on pretty much at all. Um, up too high, it's gonna cause like some kind of nasty haloing and things like that in places, something like that. You don't really want that. So basically I'd like to start at a relatively low radius and then just kind of work my way up. And I hope you guys can see it because the resolution of the video might not be perfect, but working our way up, we're just getting more and more sharpening. And you can click on your preview to see the before and after. Well, because of the layer blending mode, you, you won't see with it like uh, uh, sharpened and not sharpened, but you will see no, don't even click on the preview. Actually, I changed my mind. That's not going to give you what you want. So we're going to hit OK. Let's just turn this off and on, and you can see it does sharpen pretty much everything. So the way that we used before, we just used a tool to basically define where we did want to be sharp and did not want to be sharp. Um, because this sharpens everything, you can just put a layer mask on this and then choose to paint in with your layer mask on the areas that you do want to be sharpened. So um, it you don't have to blanket sharpen everything, and this will do that, but you can just use a layer mask and then there's always options. There's always options with Photoshop. All right, let's do the last method we're going to show. And I'm going to go to filter and we're going to go to sharpen and unsharp mask. Don't ask me about those because I don't ever use them. I don't know. I don't think there's good. Unsharp mask just gives you a decent bit of control. And it's not my favorite way to sharpen, but it is pretty effective. Um, basically, your amount is how much sharpening is going to happen. 
You can choose your radius just like you can choose a radius for the high pass filter. And threshold, usually I just leave that at zero. If you bump it up, it takes like the, um, the smoother skin, it doesn't tend to sharpen that. But leaving it at zero, it's, it's just gonna sharpen everything. And then instead of using my threshold to decide what does and doesn't get sharpened, I just use a layer mask. Ooh, my hand fall off the table there. I'm good at talking and walking and sitting, apparently. If you bump up your radius, it's gonna basically do the same thing that the radius does in the, um, in the high pass filter. You can see it a little bit better there. And I don't, it's kind of nasty, right? It's kind of look a little bit weird. So if you go too far, there we go. Let's just bring this down a little bit. I would recommend not going too far with the amount or the radius. It's gonna look a little bit weird. All right, and keep in mind, you don't have to make this visible every year. So if it looks good on a place like the eyes, for instance, then you can keep this like that on the eyes and then you could run another layer where it looked good on the skin or something like that. So let's hit okay. And the before and the after real quick. There we go. So you can see it really did sharpen quite a bit. Now here with the layer mask, if you put a layer mask on there, I'm just gonna hit command I to invert the layer mask and then paint with white at about 10% flow. And then I can literally just decide, you know, okay, I'm painting this layer back visible and I don't even have to paint it 100% visible. So I can say like, you know, only give me a little bit of this visible and then it's going to just, you know, just sharpen the areas that I'm painting. Kind of like we do with a sharpen tool. Um, this will just give you, because you had all those options when you're creating the sharpening, it gives you a lot more control over the sharpening itself. There we go. So you can see the difference there. So here's with the sharpen tool. Turn that off and on. This is the high pass filter and this is the unsharp mask. I think just comparing all three of them, I don't know. I think high pass loses to be honest. I think I like the sharpen tool and I think I like the unsharp mask the best. I've never compared them before, it's the first time. But you can stack them. What if we did this? What if we did this unsharp mask and then put that on top the high pass filter on top of there and you could stack it up. Let's do it a couple times. You're gonna see, it's gonna look pretty nasty, but um, we might get something that we like. Oh, I just spit everywhere. I'm the worst show host today. I'm spitting and my arm fell off. You don't want to have me over for dinner. It's okay. I don't want to be over for dinner other way, unless you cook deliciousness. Let's put a black layer mask on that and then I'm gonna paint white on my layer mask with 100% and then we can just decide like anywhere that we want to be like really, really, really sharp, like the eyelashes there. You can just stack that on there and that's gonna get even more. So we'll zoom out a little bit so you can kind of see what this looks like at a slightly zoomed out. All right, and it is a bit much. Um, anytime you guys do sharpening, usually I like to just lower the effect down a little bit, more than you'd think you'd need to because if like everything is relatively blurry and then you just have one thing that's like super, super sharp, it tends to look fake. So. Um, don't do that. <laughs> okay, now that we have our sharpening, um, and you can see it really did bring a lot of definition into our eye, which was lacking because our eye was relatively dark. The last couple of things I'm gonna do, usually when finishing an image off, I'm gonna grab an adjustment layer and uh, we're gonna go to curves and I'm just gonna click here in the middle and drag that up. And then I'm just gonna grab a lasso tool. I've been doing this a lot lately. I don't really have a reason, but just grab a lasso tool and do something like that. Instead of a circle, I just, like to do something like this because it, it just creates some variation. All right, I'm gonna invert the layer mask and then invert it again and give that a big blur. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like just, you know, grabbing what I would normally do is grab a, a circle and then blur that. But this time the layer mask looks like this. So it's just a little bit more varied. It, it doesn't, they wind up not looking as Photoshoppy. basically is what what you can get out of it. All right, we're gonna lower down the opacity on that and I'm just gonna paint black a little bit here on the neck because I don't want that to be visible there. All right, so just a little bit of light kind of coming across the face. Now we're gonna grab another adjustment layer. We're gonna go to curves again, click in the middle, bring that down and this time we'll just grab a circle because I don't feel like getting fancy with it again. And maybe you guys didn't like getting fancy with it. I don't know, I have no way of anticipating. There we go, we'll just bring a little bit more and I'm gonna blur that again because it's, generally you don't want your edges to be defined. Um, if, it's, if it's too clear that you just created a circle and then put a slight blur on it in Photoshop, it totally, it's gonna look fake every time. That's why I kind of did that, you know, um, that different technique with it looking, you know, tracing a different shape. So 
Um, you just, basically everything you can do to keep it from looking fake, like you actually did apply it in Photoshop, is generally a plus. And apparently blurring at 250 pixels is just too much for this computer. Can't take it, it's angry, doesn't like, oh god, it really doesn't wanna do what, oh my god, it's the worst day of my life. Cancel, get out of there, get out of there. <laughs> I'm gonna try that one more time. I don't know what happened guys. Don't look at me like that. I, I didn't do it. It was this I never do anything wrong. It's always the computer's fault We're gonna grab another adjustment layer here at the very end and um, I'm just gonna go to levels and do a quick duo tone We're gonna grab our blue channel and pull the blues in a little bit from my highlights and my shadows There we go and it's just going to give us a little bit of color in the highlights and shadows. Lower that opacity down a bit. Give it kind of a cool look. All right, we'll hit full screen and zoom in. And that's it, guys. That's the image. It's done. I'm done with it. I'm, there, I'm not going to do it anymore. This is done. And I hope you're done. And I hope you never want to see this image again because you're not going to. That's it. <laughs> guys, if you have any questions about this or anything else, let me know. You can find me here on Flurn because it's my website, or you can find me on Twitter at AKNacer because that's someone else's website. Flurn you later. <laughs>